What's up, everybody? One coach's opinion. And remember, it's just my opinion. It's not a fact. Um, today, I want to talk about accountability. And I'm really uh, speaking to about boxers and not always taking accountability for what they did wrong. You lose a fight. If you ever look at what, I never really hear guys talk about what they did wrong. They know, and sometimes they know they could have did this, they could have ran harder, they could have did this, they could have did this, but it's hard to talk about. And what brings it up, it's, it's it, you know, two things on my mind to bring it up. When I'm seeing, I'm seeing fighters that have become world champions with their coaches and take a loss and fire all the coaches. The same coaches that got you to your world title. They got you through your squeaky parts. Now you're firing them because you lost. Now, if you can honestly say you did everything you were supposed to do, you ran like you were supposed to run, you trained like you were supposed to train, you sparred like you were supposed to spar, you did everything that your coach asked, and, and, and you fired him behind this, I still wouldn't agree because that's what you've been doing your whole career with this guy. And it, when you were winning, everything was fine. Then there's a lot of times when boxers and some people in general, teams, they can't take losses. Whether it's you lost and now everybody wants to have a big meeting or you lost and you know you ain't come to the gym for days. Sometimes it's just about taking accountability and that's how you grow in this sport. That's how you learn. You know what I'm saying? You you might have you might not let's let's give an instance, because I know every boss has, has debated on this. Give an instance. You might have all your career you might have had sex with your girl. Or you might have had sex. I don't, I don't wanna, Somebody label you might have sex, which some people say is draining, and some people might say it's a myth. I do know this every time I have sex, I'm tired when it's over, <laughs> and it makes me lazy. Sometimes you might have sex to get tired and to get lazy, that happens too, but <laughs> I know it does affect your body. I can honestly say that. I don't know if that affects fighters. And, and you might be the fighter, to be honest, that it never bothered anybody until, until you lost. But that could be just the fact that you were able to get away with it with whoever you were fighting until it came a time you didn't. Now it's point the fingers time. I've heard fighters say, oh yeah, man, plenty, plenty, plenty of athletes smoke weed. That might be true. You might have some world champions. You might have some Super Bowl winners. You might have some all-stars and whatever sport there is, players that smoke weed. But I guarantee you one thing. They would be even better if they didn't. That don't mean you can't become a world champion smoking weed. I'm not, I'm not condoning it, but that don't mean I can't argue it because some guy will pop out and say, I smoked weed my whole career. That might be. It worked until it didn't work. Then we start pointing fingers. He ain't gonna say, man, you know what? I need to stop smoking this weed. It's gonna be a thousand reasons why he lost behind, but besides that. You might just have enough talent that the weed didn't affect you. Or whatever, or whatever your bad habit was didn't affect you until it did. Until you went up with a guy who had just as much talent. Or maybe not, a guy that might have just studied a little bit better than you and put himself in a bit better situation than you. That could very well happen. But if your team has gotten you so far, and I, I don't I don't I don't want to point no fingers, 
if your team has gotten you so far, you won 30 fights, you won 20 fights, you won 10 fights and became a world champion, then all of a sudden, you lose and start pricking people off your thing. Now, if, 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 if certain coaches didn't show up, and you feel, man, that affected the camp, man. I needed that body pad work. And every time we turned around, you weren't there. I'm going to get me another bad body pad guy that could be there. Because this is my life. I understand. If you really can point your finger and tell the coach what he did wrong, then by all means, let him go. Especially if he's not willing to adjust the problem or address the problem. By all means, you can let him go. But if everything went the same way it's always gone and you just lost, first person you got to look at is yourself because, number one, you control everything around you. You can't mess around and say, man, I, I knew it, man. I'm tired of this guy. If, if you knew it and you were tired of him, then it was your responsibility to fire him before the loss. Now, if the loss, if, you know, like I said, in most in most cases, when a fighter loses, we never know why, you know what I'm saying? It, we never know what, what went on, you know what I'm saying? But it don't always have to be the coaching staff or this happened or that happens. Sometimes it, it could be a lot of fighters don't take accountability of what they do. They just upset at the loss. But but the thing is, most likely they were told about this problem way beforehand, and they just brushed it aside. Nah, man, nah. That ain't it. I know. Nah, 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 nah. Till finally, you can't hide it no more. Every fighter out here has a weakness. Whether it's in the gym, out of the gym, in the ring, it's there. And when it gets discovered, it gets exploited. And once it gets exploited, you might lose. Now, the only person that really could argue with me about this would be what? Rock Marciano and Floyd Mayweather. They said, we never lost. I don't know what you're talking about. But Floyd had some close fights. And the second time around, he demolished the guys. Now, one time, you know, he said hand problems. Get that. The other time, I don't think I don't think he claimed anything with Madonna of, of hand problems. Now, it just was a rough, unusual. Madonna was just a rough house. Now, the thing could have been the second time they fought, Madonna probably said, well, shh, I'm paid. He could have been holding because you think about it, man. He pretty much after the second time, I'm gone. I, I don't need this boxing no more. I'm going to enjoy life. I'm going to get fat. I'm going to enjoy life. But most of the time... When the mistakes were made, they were corrected in, in, in Floyd's case. And he remained undefeated. Now, that's probably guys are arguing. Nah, he lost that fight. He lost. Yeah, but it doesn't make a difference. Bottom line is, somewhere along, something changed. Something was discovered. Something happened for the next fight to go much better. And like I said, everybody, I don't care what level you're on, everybody has a weakness. If Tank and, and Devin fight, it's up to them to find each other's weakness. If if Shakur and Tank fight, Shakur and Lomachenko, it's up to them to find the weakness. And, and that's just how boxing goes. You know, it's no ties. No draws in the amateurs. And that's when you learn to either humble yourself and work on your craft, I think. I think it's good that way that they don't have draws and ties in the amateurs because I think fighters need to learn to lose and come back to the gym and work on their craft. In the pros, you're going to get lost. Majority of times, you're going to get losses. I mean, we had a nice card this uh, past weekend when Canelo fought. I, what, there, there were no draws on that card. It <laughs> means half of them guys. Well, not on what we saw. I don't. I don't know about the. the um, you know, there was undercards or something like that. But half the guys had to go home with a loss. 
and decide how they're going to handle that loss and come back. And that's what makes a fighter great to me. You know, Ali, they, people say the greatest. He had losses. He had losses that, that Floyd exploits. I ain't never lost to do eight fights and all that stuff. But Ali did, but he still came back and became one of the greatest fighters of all time. Sugar Ray Leonard had losses. There's not too many great fighters out there that you can name that didn't have losses. Hagler, everybody. And just because sometimes a fighter could be at the end of their road and after that loss, they quit. They just said, I've had enough. I've been getting up every morning. I've been eating certain food. I've been doing all this. I've been doing all that. Guess what? I'm financially to a place where I don't want to do it no more. Andre Ward. We didn't see Andre Ward take a beat down from nobody. We didn't see Andre Ward. Maybe the first Kovalev fought, fight was a little bit sketchy when he came back, but then the second one, he clearly dominated and, 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 and improved himself. And he's just humble with what he has. Maybe I don't want to, I'd rather announce, I don't want to torch my body, but he looks like he can still get in the ring. And I've already getting in the ring, shot, I mean, spawn with some um, top level guys, just, you know, keeping himself a task. But it could be any reasons why a guy, you know, quits or stops but just to just to fire everybody who has gotten you to a position after a win some guys are fine you got like josh taylor i can you got you got you uh what undisputed and then relieved yourself of all of your coaches like and i don't know it could be something personal i don't know what happened they could have been stealing it could have been anything but bottom line you ain't been the same since you got to wonder, is that worth it? There's some other people out here, you know, I'm not one point no fingers. They fired their coaches and haven't been the same since. It might be something about what this coach saw on you, what he had you doing that helped you win. And that's pretty much how boxing goes. But you have to learn to take accountability. If you take accountability, I guarantee you have a better career. And once you start taking accountability, you can hold other folks accountable. Because now they can't say, nah, hold up, Joe, wait a minute, nah, nah, nah. They had to go with you. If you say, man, I was in it, I didn't miss a day in the gym. I didn't do nothing wrong, blah, blah, blah. Then you can start maybe pointing your finger, especially if they did. But if nobody missed a day in the gym and it was just a camp and everything went the same way you went and you went in there saying, I feel strong, this is the best camp I ever had, and you lost, I don't see no need to fire your coaches. Unless this has been an ongoing thing or you saw something and people said, one day somebody's going to exploit this. One day somebody's going to exploit this. And then you say, well, I'm, I'm going to let y'all go. Maybe I could go with that. But a lot of times it's about not taking accountability of what went on. You know what I'm saying? Because you can make adjustments. Think about it again. When things are going right, your coach is guiding you. When things start going wrong, you need more than guidance. You need a, another game plan. You need something else. And a lot of times, if you don't prepare yourself to make these changes, it's like kind of when, when you're sparring sometimes and and you like, man, well, like yesterday, last time you told me to do this, and this time you're telling me to do that, and then that, now you're trying to tell me to do this. I'm confused. No, you're not confused. It's different situations. We could be working on different things. He could have changed up. His coach could have got smart. I mean, think about some of these football games where a team is smashing in the first half, in the first half of the game. They go back to the locker room. They're able to look on, on, on the chart. The offensive coordinator or defense coordinator can tell them the mistakes they're making and they come back and it's a whole different game. You're looking at the other team like, man, how y'all blow that lead? It could have been coaching. It could have been a few maneuvers, there were adjustments that were made that made it successful. That, that, that could be baseball. That could be soccer. That could be any other sport. Definitely boxing. Boxing is like a chess match, especially when you get to certain levels. Canelo Berlanga, 
Nobody expected Berlanga to go as long as he did. Nobody expected that fight. Now, was he losing the fight? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, were you at any time saying, oh my God, Canelo might lose. He might take this from Berlanga. Might... No, but you had to respect Berlanga for his performance. He's just a strong guy who Canelo probably said, man, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think I should walk this guy down. But he made the adjustments he needed to make both sides for the fight to go the way it went. And that loss to Canelo gave people more respect for him than any win he's ever had. I promise you. Sometimes, and, and, and when you go back and you're disappointed, your toughest day might, might, might be the reason that you become who you are. But you got to be able to see it rather than to stop pointing fingers and saying it was your fault or it was your fault or it was your fault. Fighters have to learn to take losses. Fighters have to learn that when they've been put down to get up and figure out what went wrong. Not blaming the floor was slippery, no nah, blah blah blah. You know, all this yelling, the music was too loud. Blah, blah, blah. How about Joe? The same floor, the same music, the same this, the same that went on on in the other guy's corner as well. Y'all shared the same ring, the same atmosphere. Learn from it and grow from it. That's all you can do with losses. Otherwise, they become losses. Some losses make fighters better fighters. It's just the way it is. Some guys lose and, and decide, I'm never going to lose again. And make corrections. And some guys just have the luxury of winning, 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 winning. And then when they finally lost, they, they quit. They might can't take it mentally. Well, Coach Opinion, tell me what you think. I think this is about fighter accountability. I just never seen a fighter saying, man, this it was all me. This time I'm going to do this. This time I'm going to do that. And if they did, they might apologize to their coach in secret. Yeah, man, you know, y'all was right, blah, blah, blah. But they point fingers in public, apologize in secret. And that could be the same. It could be a coach. If, if you made a mistake and you know you made the wrong call, have some accountability and hopefully you can move on. One coach's opinion is about accountability. Tell me what you think.